Hello, and today I'm going to be uh, showing you my manga collection. I've been getting a lot of requests to do so on my TikTok. It's just, I don't think I have enough time uh, in 60 seconds to show off like all my series and stuff. And I kind of want to explain each series. So I thought, why not just make a YouTube video instead? Uh, and that's what I'm going to do. And so now I'm going to show you my manga collection. All right, so uh, I'm up on a chair. <laughs> uh, if you're wondering, my manga is organized by last name, uh, except with these two series, because I was dumb. I thought, oh, hold on. I thought this was the author's name. No, it's the it's the title in Japanese. Uh, that's actually the author's name right there. Uh, so yeah, this is with my T's instead. Uh, so that's it. That's just a little warning. All right, so time to show off my collection. All right, so first we have uh, Our Dreams at Dust. Let me just bring it out again. Um, this is a pretty adult series, kind of. Uh, it's about a group of people who are on the LGBT spectrum uh, as they hang out in this safe house. And it's really good. It's only four volumes long. Uh, so that's really cool. So next up we have Doubt, which is this uh, horror series. I've talked about it on my TikTok a little bit. It's kind of... I got memed on for this, but it's very similar to the video game Among Us, where it's a survival horror game where you have to guess who the killer is. Uh, and it's pretty good. It's a pretty good horror to start off with if you are new to manga and the horror genre in manga. All right. All right, so I had to take them down uh, to show you what's behind. Uh, I have all 10 volumes of Nichijo or My Ordinary Life. Uh, this is a really, oh, this is a really funny, uh, cute series. Uh, it's really weird. Uh, My Ordinary Life <laughs> is not a good description of it. It's very surreal, uh, but I love it. I love the art in it. It's really good. Uh, yeah, and again, it's pretty short. It's only 10 volumes, so I'd recommend it if you're really into comedy. All right, and here's my uh, my small uh, Asano collection. I have a little bit more in my incompleted manga uh, next to me. I have A Girl on the Shore, which uh, I I don't recommend this to people ever. If you know, you know uh, the content in it. Very big trigger warning uh, if you're thinking about picking it up. Yeah, I it's I know it's art, and I know there's a purpose to it. I just I'm personally not a fan of that subject matter, but I'm a fan of Asano, so I have it on my shelf. Uh, and a, uh, one shot that I am a big fan of by him is Downfall, which is about a mangaka realizing that, like, yeah, his life kind of sucks. Um, and that's okay. No, <laughs> but it's a really good series. Or not series, it's a good one shot uh, by him. It's kind of semi-autobiographical, so you get a really good sense of, like, what it's like to be Inyo Asano, it's not good. So uh, I'd recommend it. It's pretty, but it's sad. So next up, we have on a much lighter note, uh, Azumanga Dayo, which is one of my favorite slice of life comedies of like all time. Oh my gosh, this series, it it's it holds a really special place in my heart because this is one of the first manga. Fun fact that I ever bought. Yep, this is my first manga series, and it's also one of my first anime too. So. Uh, it's really funny. It's really cute. Uh, just a bunch of girls hanging out. Uh, recommend it. Uh, what I don't recommend is... Alright, so Fully Cooly the anime, right? Awesome. Amazing. It's one of the... Oh, sorry, Kaneki. Uh, it's really good. The manga, uh, not so much. That's kind of a theme with manga that comes after the anime. Uh, like an anime original gets adapted into a manga. It tends not to be that good. Uh... And that's sadly the case with the Fully Cooly manga. It's just, uh, they changed the ending and the art style is not as good. Uh, I, I don't recommend it. But it's a good way to own Fully Cooly without having to seek out the DVDs. Uh, and then next up we have, you can see uh, Toka and Kaneki. Oh, ah! Uh, to <laughs> Toka and Kaneki over here. I'm just going to move them uh, to where I need Sorry for the awkward cut, but yeah, I had to, I had to move them. Uh, and I was having trouble with my one hand. But yeah, I have... Uh, all of Tokyo Ghoul. Oh, does this bring me back to middle school? This, this was a tre treasure show. Uh, I can't even speak. It was such a cool series to my edgy 13-year-old self. I mean, it's about these monsters who eat people. And like, what's, what's cooler than that, you know? And it's super emo. And oh my gosh, I had a backpack and everything. Yeah, I dressed up as Kaneki in eighth grade too uh, to, uh, to Comic-Con. 
So yeah, Tokyo Ghoul is a big part of my early teenage years. Like I said, it's about monsters who eat people and then the main character gets turned into one of these ghouls as they're called. Uh, amazing. I don't have Tokyo Ghoul Re though. I'm debating if I want to get it. The original series completes pretty nicely, but I heard Re is pretty good. Uh, I'm thinking about it. Maybe I will get it. All right, I had to move the chair a bit, but uh, yeah, this is my Junji Ito collection now. So first up, we have Uzumaki, a classic. You know, what if spirals were all crazy and killy and all that? Yeah, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's basically about a town who gets overrun by a curse of spirals, and it's a bunch of like short stories having to deal with that. Uh, really good. It's a classic for a reason. Uh, next up, we have Shiver and Smashed, which are just... Uh, two collections of short stories written by Junji Ito. I think there's about like nine-ish uh, short stories in each. Uh, and they range in quality, but they're pretty good. You know, Junji Ito has that <laughs> has that quality to them. You know, at least the art's going to be good, even though if the story's a little, uh, but <laughs> yeah, it's, they're, they're really good. I'd recommend them. Uh, and then finally, this is a recent pickup, is uh, Rem Remina <laughs> Um by him. Apparently this is one of his first stories, but it only recently got translated to English, so that's pretty fascinating. Uh, from what I've heard, it's about a planet named Remina, and it is coming to Earth, and it's going to destroy Earth, and there's a girl also named Remina, and the, the town is kind of like like blaming her for this planet. It's really weird. It's not uh, like a lot of Junji Ito stories from what I've heard, so I'm really interested in that. I can't wait to read it. Next up, we have uh, Dead Man Wonderland, all 13 volumes of that. Ooh, this this is another one that brings me back to middle school, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, it is about a young boy who gets framed for the murder of his entire, uh, like, all of his classmates, and he gets sent to Dead Man Wonderland, which is basically like a carnival slash prison, prison, <laughs> um, that basically kills inmates as entertainment for the public, except... It's actually a cover-up for these people called dead men who are able to control their blood uh, and make it act as a weapon. So it's very, it's very weird, especially near the end gets just bonkers. Uh, <laughs> but it's, it's pretty good. It's, you know, it's pretty well known throughout the community. Uh, don't watch the anime because it sucks. It only covers about the first five volumes of the manga. And then you have all of this rest that it doesn't cover. So I'd recommend read the manga, don't watch the anime. Ow, I <laughs> hit my head. Uh, but yeah, really, really pretty good series. Uh, next we have Living Stone, which is done by the same artist as Dead Man Wonderland. So that's why I put them together. This one's weird, but I love it. Oh my gosh. Uh, it's about these reapers as they have to go around and find these people who are just really down on their luck. They're just not doing good and they have to basically convince them like if their soul is powerful it's so hard to explain but if their soul is like really powerful and they're really old they try to convince them to like you know hey keep living you know so you have this super powerful soul and then if they don't decide to keep living they got to collect the souls and make sure that the area isn't contaminated by this nasty soul <laughs> it's really it sounds really dumb and weird but it's it's really good and especially this last volume uh, it got really sad and pretty heartbreaking. So it's only four volumes, so it's a really uh, cheap read. So I'd recommend it. And then next up we have, oh, uh, the classic, Madoka Magica. Oh, uh, uh the, this is another Fooly Cooly situation where the manga isn't that good compared to the anime. It's not as bad as the Fooly Cooly manga, but it it isn't that good. <laughs> um, uh, I just recommend watching the anime. I don't know if it's still on Netflix, but I mean, we know we don't all watch anime legally, so, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's a good way to own it, again, like, fully coolly without having to search out for the DVDs, uh, but yeah, Magical Girls, Witches, the whole, it's, there's nothing weird going on, no twist or anything, so, yeah, but I'd recommend it. Uh, next up, we have A Silent Voice, um, this one, again, this is pretty well known in the anime and manga community because of... Well, it's pretty sad, <laughs> not gonna lie. It's basically about a guy who bullies a girl because she's deaf when he's in elementary school. Um, and then he they grow up and he decides to change and become a better person uh, because of how depressed he is. Um, 
yeah, it's a really good, st it, not a lot of manga focuses on bullying, especially as it's like main focus and that, and also they don't really focus on people who have disabilities. So this is a pretty, you know, groundbreaking manga. I think it won like a couple of awards too, which makes sense. Uh, yeah, check it out. Next, we have The God's Lie. I also talked about this on my TikTok a little bit. Uh, basically, it's about this guy who I think is in like the sixth grade and he has this classmate who is living by herself with her little brother uh, and they don't have any like parents or anything. And so this guy, instead of going to uh, soccer camp, he decides to stay with uh, this girl for the next week. And it's really sad. And there's this like twist, not, I guess it is kind of like a twist at the end. That's just, it makes you go, oh, uh oh, <laughs> it's really bad. Um, and you find out where her, her parents are and you're just like, oh, oh, it's just, it's such a feels train. Oh, you feel so bad. <laughs> but it's like, it's only five chapters. It's a pretty short read. Um, I, 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 you know, if you just want a quick, short little thing, good choice. Uh, next up, we have all 13 volumes of My Little Monster. Ah, uh, I'm not gonna lie. It's okay. <laughs> it's not the best romance I've ever seen. I'm not a big fan of Haru and I forgot the main girl's name, but their relationship dynamic, it kind of made me frustrated because one of them would be like, I love you. And then the other one would be like, no, I don't love you. And then the other one would fall in love. And the other one's like, I don't love you anymore. Blah, blah, blah. It's, and then this goes on for 13 volumes. So I know that's kind of a, a trope in a lot of romance manga, but uh, I don't know. This one just kind of made me frustrated. Uh, but I like it. It's, it's <laughs> no, but I, I do like it a little bit. That's why I have it all. But yeah, again, it's, it's a romance, not much deviation. Uh, this guy's a delinquent. This girl is like super smart. Um, but yeah, I actually like the side characters a lot more. They're they're a lot more interesting, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but yeah. Uh next up, ooh, this is a this is a tragic case, my pathetic vampire life. Uh this is a comedy about a guy who he's a vampire. He's been a vampire for like, I don't know, like 140 years, I think. And he's going to high school uh for like the 120th time. <laughs> uh and he has a friend who is also a vampire. I think he appears on yeah, he appears on this cover. Um, uh, but this sadly, I don't know what happened, I don't know if it got cancelled or what, but it ends after two volumes, and these are the only two volumes that ever got published, so it's in my finished manga shelf, even though it isn't technically finished, because it got cancelled, I guess, I don't know, but it's, it's okay, it's not super funny, I just think it's kind of cool to have this, because I can't really find this anywhere anymore, I guess that shows the quality of it, <laughs> I don't mean to be mean, but yeah, it's, it's okay, I, you know, uh, next up is Go For It, Nakamura. This peak BL, peak fiction, all right? It's, God, Nakamura is so relatable. It's about this guy, it's Nakamura, and he's in love with his classmate. Uh, I think his name is Hiro, maybe? I'm not sure. Um, and he's <laughs> so awkward, so relatable. It's like Watamote, except, no, it's not even, it's not like Watamote at all. It's just both protagonists are really awkward. Um... But it's it's so good. It's only one volume. And also someone asked me if this was Yaoi. It's not Yaoi. There's like one sort of etchy scene in it. Not really. Uh, it's it's fluffy, good romance. And I love it. Next up, we have uh we have all of okay, you can't really see it, but all of Battle Royale. Uh I actually got this because my video store that for some reason sells manga had this all in a bundle. And it was only like 60 bucks. So I was like, oh, that's a steal. So I bought it. And yeah, I have all of Battle Royale. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's, it's you know, you say like, oh, it's a Battle Royale story. That's, this is why. This, because it's Battle Royale. It's a bunch of kids, put them on an island, have them kill each other. Um, the gore, very detailed, if you're into that. Uh, it is very predictable because as soon as like one side character starts getting screen time, you know, you know what's going to happen to them. They're going to. You know, uh, but yeah, it's started it all, started the, you know, put a bunch of people together, have them kill each other, you know, so pretty good. Uh, and then finally, for my completed manga, we have, uh, you have the first three volumes right here, and then we have volumes four through 12 of Sailor Moon. Uh, I kind of grew up with this series. It showed up on WB, like, around the same time as Pokemon, which I was actually there for, but I was like, oh, might as well 
watch these girls in sailor suits fight for, <laughs> you know, 10 minutes before Pokemon came on. So yeah, and it's, you know, a bunch of girls, they're the Sailor Scouts. Yeah, I, th I feel like a lot of people know what, you know, Sailor Moon is and what it's about, but I'm surprised that they don't, like, well, I guess these are, like, the new versions, but I remember watching it back in the day where they, like, had to censor everything. <laughs> so, but yeah, no, this is, like, the, the uncut, uncensored Sailor Moon. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I would honestly recommend if you have, like, a niece or someone to give this series to them, because it is sort of aimed at younger girls. Uh, but it is still part of my childhood, so that's why I have it. So yeah, that's my completed manga. And now to show you my uncompleted manga. Alright, so this is my uncompleted manga, or manga that is ongoing. I'm actually wearing my dad's flashlight right now on my head, uh, just so you can see stuff a little bit better. Because <laughs> I don't have like a ring light or anything. Alright, so <laughs> let's start off with uh, my other Asana work, besides the two up there. Uh, Good night, Poon Poon. Ooh, <laughs> this is a this is a series. Uh, I mean, it's considered one of the best manga of all time, uh, and it is. I do believe that it is pretty good. Uh, the problem, I mean, the art. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that like the art and the story and the characters and everything like that, amazing Mwah. masterpiece. Uh, the only problem I have with this series, and it has nothing to do with the series itself, I just don't like it when people say like, oh, it's a must read, you must read it if you're a manga fan. I do believe in that statement, however, uh, if you have like mental health or like any, like if you're just having like problems in life going on right now, um, don't read this because <laughs> you're going to feel like garbage afterwards. I read this in 8th grade, I read it through Scanlations, but um... I read it online, and uh, I was in, like, eighth grade, and I was doing pretty good, but then after I finished it, I just sort of, like, sat down in my bed and cried, because <laughs> it was so, it was just so depressing. I mean, th that's what it is. It's supposed to be, like, real life, and real life is depressing. Um, but yeah, if you want to feel depressed, give Goodnight Poon Poon a try. It has amazing art, but you're gonna feel like garbage afterwards. <laughs> On a way lighter note, a way more funnier note, it's it's Yotsuba and uh, this is by the same guy who did Azumanga Dayo, um, and it is I mean it's so good. It's about a little girl who moves from the city to like the rural countryside with her dad, um, and they just hang out. And Yotsuba just walks around and meets people and just has a good old time as like a five year old. Um, the only problem with this is that. I mean, it's not a problem for me because I'm really behind on it, but the releases come out pretty slow. Like, Azuma loves to take his time on this series. Um, so if you want to get into it, just know that, like, you should probably take it slow because it's not- it's also not finished yet. Uh, but yeah. Next up- I don't know- I don't know why I have this. It's just a volume of Future Diary. Uh, I don't like Future Diary. That is something about me. That is true. I- I watched it- I don't know, I was probably like 13 or 14 when I first saw it, and I, and even in my edged feel, I, I love Tokyo Ghoul and Dead Man Wonderland and all those edged filled series, but when I saw Future Diary, I was like, man, this kind of sucks. <laughs> it, it wasn't that good, but I found this at a used bookstore, and I was like, hey, it's Tokyo Pop, you know? Oh, and they also never, like, completed the series, which is also true if you're thinking about collecting this, just know that they there's 12 volumes to this series, but they only published 10 in English, so just a heads up, but I was like, oh, it's like a rare find, but like, I don't know why I still have this, I don't, I'm not, I have a ton of other rare finds, I don't need this, so I'm probably gonna sell it, um, maybe to make room, because I don't have a lot of room right now, so yeah. Uh, next up, we have just volume 3 of Chainsaw Man, this is a really re uh, recent purchase, it's the same purchase I made with like Remina and all that, um, I really want to get into this series. I read the first three chapters on the Shonen Jump app, and I am hooked. Oh my gosh, it is so cool. The art is so good. Uh, but I can't find the first two volumes anywhere. I know I'm gonna have to order them online. I know everyone was saying, like, oh, just get them on Amazon. Uh, and I am, I am probably gonna have to do that because I just cannot find this anywhere in, like, physical stores. But I really want to collect this. It's so good. I think it just finished up, like, the first part finished up in Japan, so hopefully... We get more of this soon because it is so good. Uh, uh, but next up, we have my one long-running shonen series that I collect. It's Haikyuu. It's 
boys playing volleyball. Uh, I grew up playing volleyball, uh, especially in like middle school. So this just uh, hits home, you know, see all, see all those boys playing volleyball. I'm like, that's me. <laughs> that's me playing volleyball. So yeah, I have one through nine and then I got volume 26 because it was just at my bookstore and I was like, hey, I'm, I'm not going to read this. I've read like up to volume, I think like seven or eight. Um, but I'm just going to try and collect this entire thing and then just binge through it because uh, I'm really dumb <laughs> and if I read something I can't like stop and then put the series down for like a week and then pick it back up again because I will just forget everything that happens uh, in the series. So I'm going to have to binge read this uh, when I finally get it all. So that'll be fun. <laughs> just have a whole, whole month of volleyball. <laughs> Alright, next up we have... Warren High School Host Club Volumes 1 through 5. I'm not the biggest fan of shoujo. I guess that's not really a, a truth because I like romance. I just don't have a lot of shoujo. I'm not super knowledgeable about it like I am with like uh, Shonen and Sane and all that. This is the exception. <laughs> I love oh, and, and two other series, but uh, yeah, Warren High School Host Club. Uh, peak fiction due to middle school. We all wanted to be Haruhi. Let's, let's not kid ourselves, all right? We all wanted to be in that host club with all those pretty boys fighting over us. <laughs> uh, it was it was great. Uh, I think there is pictures of me uh, as Haruhi in middle school. And I even, like, oh, this, this is embarrassing, but I wore the same um, jacket that I wore for my Haruhi cosplay to a middle school dance. So that's that's a fun fact. That that shows you how much I... I love the anime a lot in middle school. I never read the manga, and I'm still slowly trying to collect it. Um, but this is, like, in 2021, this is, like, one of my top series that I just want to get out the way, because it's only 18 volumes, so. Uh, next up, we have, uh, print, don't look at this, no, not yet, <laughs> we have, before this, we have, we have Princess Jellyfish, which, uh, I need to get more of this, it's so good, uh, it's about an otaku girl, and she makes, she becomes friends with this guy who just likes wearing women's clothing, he just... He likes doing it, so, and they become friends, and he helps her get out of her shell a little bit more, because she's, like, a shy otaku girl, uh, and it's really, it's really nice, it's just good, wholesome fun, but I only have volume one of this for some reason, I think it's because the volumes are really expensive, they're, like, 20 bucks each, which, like, oh, but, you know, what, what do you do, manga's expensive, I'm gonna have to probably get it used, all right, <laughs> You can't, you can't say anything, all right? I, I was really into, into Hitalia in middle school. Like a lot of, a lot of young weebs are. All the cosplay videos, the fan art, the fan fiction. I, I consumed it all. Um, but yeah, Hitalia was a big part of like sixth, seventh grade for me. So I, and I found the manga at a used bookstore. I think this was after I got in my Hitalia phase, but I was like, oh, that's funny. So I bought it and now it's just... A, a reminder of what I once was. So yeah, that's why I have it. Also, these these are also kind of a rare find because they're by Tokyo Pop. So yeah, I you know I recommend Italia. No, <laughs> but it, it's these are good mementos to have if it was a part of your childhood like uh, it was for me. Sadly. <laughs> All right, next up we have well we have a good series. It's uh My Hero Academia. I have volumes one and two, and then let me scooch back a little bit. Uh, three through ten. Um, this is my other long-running shonen series. Um, you know, it's but kids, superpowers, guy, main character, born without superpowers, he gets superpowers, it's pretty awesome, it's pretty swag. Um, the fandom around this, I know it gets a lot of bad rap, but I think, I think for what it is, My Hero Academia is good. I know the fandom's a bit whack, and I know it isn't like the peak fiction that, you know, some people make it out to be, but it's, it's good, it's good popcorn, like, you, you know, just, bo young, young people hitting each other, and that's, that's all you need in life, you know, just a little bit of violence, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a good story. Uh, next up, we have volumes one through nine of Attack on Titan, and currently, uh, me and my friends are actually watching this on Discord, because we have nothing else better to do, so they're like, let's watch Attack on Titan, because it just finished, and I was like, okay, so, so I've only seen the first year, uh, Attack on Titan, it has a really weird relationship with me, because I watched the first season in middle school, around, like, 2014, um, but then I, you know, it was such a long wait for the second season, that when the second season came out, I was kind of dipping out of my anime phase, um, and now I'm back in my anime phase, 
and now we're on like the fourth season so i was like wait well, hold on <laughs> so um so yeah now i'm trying to catch up with attack on titan also i think this this volume of attack on titan was the second ever volume of manga i ever bought it was either this or a volume of black butler which i don't have anymore i got rid of my black butler i i'm sorry for anyone who knew me in middle school you know i like tokyo ghoul black butler um italia i was i was a mess <laughs> I, I was i was a mess uh, but yeah, Attack on Titan, really, really good series. I don't think the author's that good, though, from what I've heard. I haven't seen, like, any evidence of it, but from... Mm, it's not the best guy. Uh, so I'm probably gonna get these all used when the manga finish... I think it... I don't know if it's finished translating in English yet, but when it is, I'm just gonna get the whole thing used. Alright, next up we have... Oh, let me scooch over. Uh, Beastars, Volume 1 through 5. Um... You know, it's it's adult Zootopia. I'm gonna have to get a new volume one though because this one's pretty badly damaged. Um, when it came in through the mail, it just got kind of destroyed a little bit. Uh, but yeah, it's about carnivores and herbivores and they're living together, except there's a murder that happens at Charrington Academy where our main character, Lagoshi, goes to school. And yeah, you gotta, you gotta find out who, who did the murder. And there's also like a mafia like plot. And again, it's also like the whole like, I'm a carnivore, but I want to eat meat, but I shouldn't eat meat because that's murder. So, yeah, it's, it's like I said, it's Zootopia, but for adults. <laughs> but it's really good. You don't have to be a furry to like this. Trust me. Um, I mean, I wouldn't know. Whoops. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's really good. And I think it just finished uh, in Japanese, too. So I'm excited to see how it ends. Uh, and then next up, we have Parasite Volumes 1 through 4. Um, I think this is the oldest series that I have on my shelf. It's either that or maybe, uh, oh, it might be, I don't think it's Battle Royale, but this is a, this is a pretty old series. It's from the 80s. Um, um, yeah, it's about a guy. It's about these aliens who come down to Earth and go into people's brains and take them over to murder humans, except one of the aliens kind of does an oopsie and instead of going to the main character's brain he goes into his hand and so now they have a sort of you know uh what's it called not it's not a parasitic relationship it's one of those ones where they got to work together in the same body uh and then they got to defeat other parasites so it's a pretty good series i think there's only eight volumes of this so i'm almost done with it so i might want to focus on trying to finish this series but yeah all right next up we have this you know how everyone has their guilty pleasures this one's mine. Kiss Him, Not Me, Volumes 1 through 5, and then I think I have, uh, hold on, give me a second. Alright, I'm on the floor now. <laughs> I have Volume 6, too, of Kiss Him, Not Me. Now this, this is my guilty pleasure. Oh, it's about a Fujoshi who is, you know, she's overweight, uh, but then she gets really skinny, and so a bunch of other pretty boys start liking her because she's skinny. <laughs> it's so bad. It's so garbage. It fetishizes gay men, which I, I'm, I'm totally against, because I don't like being fetishized. But, oh, it's so trashy and so good. <laughs> it's it's basically my, my stupid harem that I love for some reason, you know? We all have that harem that's dumb. No, or in High School Host Club, that's like a classy harem. This is just a garbage harem, and I love it. Oh, so yeah, kiss him. I have six volumes of it, and guess what? I'm probably going to complete it. <laughs> It's low on my list of things I need to complete, but I probably will. <laughs> Alright, next up, this is one of my actual series that I have up to date, is uh, Blue Flag. I have volumes 1 through 6 of this, and this, I know it's new, I know it's still publishing, but I, I read it through scans online, and this, this, ha this has to be one of my favorite romances of all time. It's just so good! <laughs> it's about a dude! And it's it's kind of complicated because it's like a, a love square almost, but this guy um, is used to be best friends with this guy, and this girl likes this guy, so she becomes friends with this guy so he can hook her up with him. Uh, but he likes someone else who you might not know who it is, but like, it's kind of obvious. <laughs> um, and there's another person who likes this girl too, so it's, just, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of... A lot of development in this story. A lot of things get a little, you know, crazy. Uh, but it's it's so good. I love it. I love it so much. I can't wait for it to get translated all into English because I this is gonna be the crowning jewel of my collection. All right, next up, this is my another shoujo exception. It's my love story. 
Oh boy, who's ready for some nice, fluffy goodness? Oh, it's about it's about a dude who's never dated anyone. It's his first year of high school, you know. He's he, he just he's a very soft guy, but then he rescues this girl at a train station, um, and then they fall in love, and it's just about them as a couple. And it's so nice. And he has a best friend who's so supportive, and yeah, it doesn't do that. I don't like that one trope where it takes like. 15 volumes and like 100 chapters just for the main characters to hold hands and then that's it they're done um like that's it that's the end of the story no they get together in volume one and that's why i love it because then you just get to witness their super cute relationship for the next 13 volumes so yeah really good if you also this is one of the only shoujo series that i know that has a male protagonist so that's pretty cool too uh but yeah highly recommend this it's, oh, it's so good uh, next up, we have uh, Kakadaguri. Wait, hold on. Sorry, I'm making sure my flashlight was still on. Uh, next, yeah, we have two volumes of Kakadaguri. I mean, it, it get, high school girls love their gambling, you know? Yeah, it's about a high school where uh, you have to basically gamble for your social status, which, I mean, as someone whose parents work at a casino, I feel like I'd be really good if I got transported to this anime world. Uh, but yeah, and you follow this new girl as she basically gambles her way to the top um yeah it's, it's pretty good i know kaiji i've heard is a lot better uh gambling series than this but this is also kind of like you know my trash like i just want to watch high school girls gamble and be crazy for uh five chapters and you know what i feel like that's very valid of me so yeah kakadaguri uh next up we have <laughs> i don't know why i have this Basically, there's a story. So basically, one day, my mom was like, oh, there's, like, a new anime uh, shop in, uh, I don't know, I forget where it was, but it was close to where we live. Uh, do you want to go check it out? And I was like, yeah, sure, that sounds fun, because we don't really have any anime stores where I live. So we go to it, and it was, like, this back alley, like, super dingy. They had nothing. Uh, they had, like, some figurines, but they were, like, $100 each for, like, a figurine that's, like, this big. I was like, whoa, that's kind of crazy. Um... And they had some manga, but most of it was Japanese. But this was, like, the one series they had in English. And it's it's Stand By Youth. I forget, this is also so old that it's actually, uh, what is it? Right to left instead or, oh, hold on, how do you read? <laughs> it's, it's the opposite way than what manga usually is. I'm not good with my rights and my lefts. Um, I think this is also, it's not even a manga, it's a manhwa. Because I believe the person who wrote this is Korean, maybe? I think so. Uh, but yeah, it's about a guy, from what I remember, it's about a guy who, uh, he messes up his exams, and so he basically has to go to, like, uh, kind of, like, what is it, like, uh, like, a kind of like an after-school, like, class to get better at, you know, tests and stuff. I forget what they're called. Like, tutoring, basically, like, tutoring, and, um, but he gets put in the delinquent class for some reason, so he, he hangs out with these delinquents, and it's also kind of a harem, um... Yeah, it's not that good. <laughs> I, I don't know why I have this, but I have it. Uh, but yeah. Uh, next up, uh, Love Me For Who I Am. And this this I have a complicated relationship with. Because it turns out, the person who wrote this... From what I've heard, I have not seen any evidence. I tried looking this up. I found no evidence for this. So if you have evidence for this, please show me it. Because I really want to know for sure. But apparently, the guy who wrote this is a... Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say it, but... You know the type of characters who look really young? Which, I mean, yeah, this, this this story is kind of full of them. But he's into that in a gross way. Um, from what I've heard. Uh, which, yeah, that's gross. And I don't want to support this series like by buying it and supporting the author if he is into that. But I don't know, and I'm hoping he isn't, because the story is pretty good. It's basically about a cafe uh, centered around people who are part of the lgbt spectrum and it's one of the first manga that i've ever read that actually has a non-binary protagonist so that's really cool you know that's a first for me and there's like you know and they all have different reasons for you know working at this quote-unquote girly boy cafe like one of them's gay and he just likes dressing up as a girl another one is actually a transgender girl so but then she finds out she's transgender throughout the manga you know she just starts off as like oh i just like wearing girls clothes but then she realizes like oh no i actually identify as a girl so it's really cool but i really hope the guy isn't into that because i really don't i really don't want him to be please tell me he's not but if he is 
I'm gonna read this series, but I'm just I'm gonna read it illegally. <sighs> Makes me sad. On um, what doesn't make me sad is Assassination Classified Volumes 1 through 15, and then I also have Volume 16 right down there. Uh, it's basically about a group of students who have an alien teacher, and he is trying, he's like, hey, I blew up the moon, uh, and if you don't kill me in a year while I'm your teacher, I'm going to blow up the earth as well. And then all these kids are like, oh no, so <laughs> they had to kill their teacher. Um, it's a fun little read, it's a fun little shonen um, series. It's not super long. This is also another series that's on my list to complete this year, because I have 16 volumes, I think there's... 21 or 22 volumes so it's not super long it's just the perfect length for me because that's that's my perfect length about 20 volumes um but yeah you know cute little series about kids who want to kill their teacher so uh next up next to assassination classroom volume 16 we have love at 14 volume 1 and 2 this uh this is such a cute series uh, it's about, about, about two two kids they're 14 and they're in love that's it <laughs> no but the, like basically they're based they're like the model mature students you know they're super like old for their age and but in, in like in private they're just two stupid 14 year olds and they're in love and that's what the series is about there is a side plot with like this like one of the students and a teacher which that makes me uncomfortable but the main like love story is so cute that i kind of just like ignore that side plot and focus on the two main characters uh, next up is My Neighbor Seki, volumes 1 through 4. This is just a, this is just a little gag manga about, basically, Seki just kind of does stupid junk at his desk. Uh, and then his, the person who sits next to him, I forget her name, but she, she's the only one who sees this. And she's like, what's going on? But then no one else witnesses the absolute tomfoolery that he does at his desk. So it's, it's pretty funny. It's just, that's why I don't have a lot of volumes of this because it's not super like plot heavy oriented, but it's a, it's a fun little read every now and then. Uh, next up, we have The Girl on the Other Side, which again, I've also heard bad things about this author. I'm hoping it's not true. <laughs> please, please don't. Mm. But also I want to apologize because in my TikTok video, I said that this is a manga series that doesn't have an anime. Turns out it has a 10 minute OVA that I wasn't even aware of. And I think it's getting an anime this year, which is, I'm I'm really happy for it because this is a pretty good series. Uh, but yeah, I want to apologize for that because I gave out not true information, but you know, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, it basically it's about a girl who, uh, it's like humans and monsters are kind of in like this separate area, you know, they're, they're enemies, right? But then this like little girl lives with this monster man uh, who kind of acts like a father figure to her. And it's really cute and I really like it. And the art style is really good. I just, it's really funky. Not funky in like a bad way, but it's like, I don't know, I just never seen like a manga with that art style. So that's why I really like it. Next up we have uh, St. Young Men Volume 1. Oh boy, Jesus and Buddha living together. <laughs> that's what it is. It's just Jesus and Buddha coming down to earth living in modern day japan and they're just hanging out um yeah it's a good slice of life manga i this has been around for like a little bit but it only recently just started getting translated into english so i'm really happy that and also they have these like really nice hard covers even if they're kind of you know expensive but yeah that's that's it it's jesus and buddha living together in modern day japan and they hang out uh, and they get food and stuff <laughs> uh next up we have uh three volumes of death note a classic classic series you know young boy um finds a notebook that kills people and then he goes crazy with power and then people gotta figure out like oh who's killing all these people yo it's the guy with the notebook that kills people it's the death note <laughs> uh yeah uh, again another another staple of my middle school experience watching death note at like 2 a.m instead of doing my my pre-algebra homework <laughs> uh but yeah you know I, I'm hoping I can also get the rest of this in 2021 because there's only 13 volumes um, so it shouldn't be that difficult to get the last 10. Uh, also by the same author and artist as, I don't know if it's the same author but I know it's definitely the same artist, um, is Bakuman which, <laughs> whoo, that was a voice crack, uh, Bakuman which is basically about uh, two kids and they're like I want to create manga and then they do that <laughs> and it's really cool because it's a shonen series so it's like it's a it's battle they battle and they try to like work their way up shonen jumps ranks and i don't know i learned a lot about like how shonen jump works and so i know it's not like 
100% accurate, probably. I know they probably, like, dramatic dramatize some things for the manga, but I, I learned a lot about, like, how Shonen Jump works and stuff, so that was really cool. Um, and then next up, we have uh, volumes 1 through 10 of Soul Eater, uh, another, you know, classic among the ranks, you know. Uh, there's these weapons, and they transform into people, and they gotta... I actually haven't read Soul Eater in a long time, I'm not gonna lie. I don't know, I don't remember exactly what this is about, because I haven't read it in a long time. Uh, like I said, I like to finish my manga, and then read it all at once. And I haven't watched this anime in years, like, probably not since, like, 6th grade. Um, but I just know that there are people, and there are weapons, and those weapons turn into people. And they also go to school, because all anime is at school. <laughs> um, but yeah. It's, it's a good series. From what I remember, uh, 12 year old me really liked it. So, and 12 year old me had excellent taste, as you can see with my Italian book. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, next up, we have Oh Maidens in Your Savage Season, Volume 1. And then, give me a second. Okay, so now we're at my uh, top shelf, which is like attached to my wall and stuff. Uh, and then I have Volumes 2 through 4, and then Volume 6. So, I'm missing Volume 5. I'm um, hoping to get it soon, and then there's only eight volumes to this, so I just need seven and eight. <laughs> uh, this is also a series that I don't really recommend to people, because it is about girls discovering uh, wow. S.E. Cross, <laughs> as they call it in the series. Yeah, and they're in high school, and they're just sort of realizing, like, oh yeah, th th that happens <laughs> with people. And they start developing crushes, and yeah, it's just, it's, it's pr pretty wacky, <laughs> like most manga. So yeah, I don't, uh, it is a very, like, niche, like, uh, but it's, it's very relatable. Oh, this is how, they're, like, sophomores in high school, and, like, this is how me and my friends acted when, you know, I, I'm, I'm a junior right now, but, like, when I was a freshman, you know, like, 14, 15, oh, relatable, relatable high school moment, <laughs> when we're all scared, like, oh, yeah, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, we're in relationships now, and we gotta figure out what we're gonna do, ah, so, so, yeah, uh, pretty good series i just it's it's not every it's not for everyone i know that uh next up we have uh one punch man volumes one through seven uh you know shonen jump about a dude punches things really hard and kills things with one punch and that's it that's the story um it's really good you know uh i heard i haven't watched the anime for it but i heard the season uh, first season's really good second season not so much uh but I'm really excited to collect all this manga because from what I've read up to volume 7, it's pretty good. So, yeah. Uh, next up, we have volumes 1 through 5 and then just volume 9 of the plot. This is my Shuzo Oshimi uh, section, by the way. But, yeah, I have volumes 1 through 5 and then volume 9 of the Flowers of Evil. Uh, I love Shuzo Oshimi and this is no exception. This is my first work by him. Uh, it's about a guy, this guy right here. Uh, and he accidentally steals his crush's gym uniform, as you can see on the cover, and this girl, Nakamura, basically psychologically tortures him <laughs> for, like, halfway through the series, and then he moves after, uh, they kinda, they do a big, like, yikes, so then he has to move, and then he becomes friends with another girl who's a lot nicer to him. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a really good psychological series. The anime, the anime is good, I mean... I l the art style is bad, but I understand, like, because it kind of gives off, like, that creepy, gross feeling to it. My problem with the anime is that it doesn't actually do the entire story. I think it only goes up to, like, when the big uh-oh happens uh, halfway through the series, but I'm not 100% sure. So, yeah. Highly recommend the manga. Anime, eh. Uh, Happiness, volumes uh, 1 and 2. Uh, this is Shuzo Oshimi's- I think this is his- third big work that got translated into English. I don't have Inside Mari. Uh, I'm hoping to get it. But this is his vampire manga uh, that gets compared to Tokyo Ghoul a lot because it's about people who eat people. Uh, except they don't eat people. They just drink their blood. Not like, Tokyo Ghoul, they actually like eat the flesh and stuff. Ew. <laughs> but yeah. This has a lot of like symbolism and a lot of weird imagery that I really like. Um, it's just the end's kind of weird. There's like a cult and yeah they worship the vampires in it it's kind of weird but i kind of like it i don't know why uh but yeah next up we have uh blood on the tracks this is shuzo oshimi's latest work and oh my gosh just 
give me a minute. I'm literally writing a paper for my school newspaper, like a, like an article about this series, because I believe it is going to be like the the new thing. All right, the big thing on the block. Uh, it's about a mother and her son, and the mother is a little, a couple of screws loose in her head, uh, and something happens at the end of this first volume, and I'm just gonna say it like real quick if you don't want to be spoiled. Uh, skip to like. 30 seconds but she basically uh pushes her nephew off of a cliff and the her son witnesses it and now they have to deal with the aftermath <laughs> basically of what happened um yeah <laughs> it's really messed up it's really again psychological like all of shuzuo oshimi's work but i like it <laughs> it's really good uh I, and it's still ongoing i have what is currently released but i think right now there's 10 volumes in japan so i'm really i want to see how this story ends because it's going to be bonkers i have a feeling next up is ah uh, another classic another another joy in my life uh neon genesis evangelion um i mean what do, what do i have to say it's 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 art <laughs> it's great i only i'm only missing one volume uh funny story my boyfriend actually got me these first three volumes for my birthday also, a little a little side tangent, but um, I actually got my first kiss watching Evangelion two years ago. So this series means a lot to me. <laughs> so yeah, e Evangelion, you know, it's good. It's the sad kids going giant robot. I know there's a lot more than that, but sad kids going giant robot. All right. <laughs> Next up, we have Magical Girl Apocalypse volumes one through five. Oh, this, this is my Edge series. If, take Tokyo Ghoul, take Death Note, take Dead Man Wonderland, take all the Edge from that series, compile it into one just garbage horror fest. And that was Magical Girl Apocalypse. And 13 year old me loved it. I haven't read this since like middle school, but I kind of want to get back into it just to see how I would feel about it. Cause it is messed up. There is uh there is SA, if you know what that stands for. Uh, there are things against children. There's gore. There's time travel for some reason. I don't know. It's so stupid. It's so dumb. I, lo it's, I don't love it. I used to love it. I don't know if I love it anymore. But yeah, it's just that campy, horrible, magical girl garbage. That is from my childhood for some reason. I don't know why I was allowed to read this uh, when I was in middle school. But yeah, next up... Um, Shonen Classic, Gintama. I only have two volumes of this because it's kind of hard to find these in physical bookstores. It's kind of old. Uh, it's about uh, a guy who... I don't remember what... Actually, you know what? I don't actually remember what this series is about that much. Because again, some of these manga I haven't read since I was in like middle school. But I want to collect them all because I remember I liked them when I was in middle school. And that's what really matters. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, from what I remember, it was funny though, so I'm gonna have to maybe, maybe I'm gonna read this, like, after I'm done with this video, just to relive my, uh, childhood a little bit. Next, uh, oh, this is a guilty pleasure. Uh, if Kiss Him, Not Me was, like, on the guilty pleasure scale, like, a, like, a 5 out of 10, this is a 9 out of 10. Oh, first of all, it is Yaoi, so just a heads up, but it is about a guy who his his thing his what gets his what gets him going is uh eating guts eating demon guts so he summons a demon he's like hey can I eat your guts and then he does but instead of killing the kid like the demon was supposed to he takes him down to the underworld and makes him his little like trainee and that's what this series is about <laughs> it's very weird it's kind of gross but I kind of love it <laughs> So yeah, it's M-A-D-K. There's only one volume that just came out in English. I don't know if any other volumes are going to be released of it. Because I don't know if there is, even in Japanese. I hope there is. <laughs> I hope there is and I hope there isn't. So I have an excuse not to like this series so much. Alright. Next up, uh, The Melancholy of Suzumiya Suzu uh, The Melancholy of Suzumiya Haruhi. Or Haruhi Suzumiya, I guess. Um... Yeah, I mean, for I didn't grow up in the 2000s, but whenever I read this series, it takes me back. <laughs> I was four in 2008, but you know what? It takes me back to 2008. Um, yeah, it's about a girl who is God, basically, and she decides to make a club uh, to find, like, extraterrestrials, uh, time travelers, all that stuff. Um, 
and all the club members turn out to be those, besides the main character, who's just like a normal guy and has to deal with Haruhi's antics, you know? Oh, big boobs. <laughs> but yeah, um, it's a, it's a class, you know, if you grew up in like the 2000s, you, you know this face. Uh, and I just had the manga because I was like, hey, why not? <laughs> Next up, we have another like light novel that gets turned into a manga, uh, Toradora. Uh, <laughs> again, this is another series I'm not the biggest fan of. Because I really don't like um, the relationship between the two protagonists. It's okay. It's better, I think, personally, than My Love, uh, My Little Monster. Not My Love Story. My, my Love Story is great. But My Little Monster. Um, because it's basically about a guy who is just a regular dude. He just looks like a delinquent. And then this really short girl who like, looks really sweet. But she's actually like crazy, wild, you know, vi very violent. <laughs> um, and... They're in love with each other's best friends, so they're trying to, you know, they, they become friends so they can get with each other's best friends, but then they fall in love, like any good romance. Um, yeah, it's okay. I think the manga, though, takes forever to come out for some reason. I don't know why. Alright, over here, it's my very, very small, uh, Urasawa corner. It's literally just two books, uh, 20th Century Boys and Monster. Uh, yeah, if you're a fan of Urasawa, you already know. You already know this, uh, monster, you know, a dude saves a kid, um, instead of a politician, and then, oh, things get wacky, murders start happening in Germany! <laughs> uh, yeah, um, good series, the artwork's great, and then 20th Century Boys, I don't know a lot about this series, I think it's about a cult, if I'm not wrong, I think, um, but yeah, really, I don't know why I don't have any more of these, they're great, the ever, if, Usually everyone has like one Urasawa work on their top 20 manga or even their top 10 and yeah it makes sense because this guy is genius. Uh we're ending we're coming to the end of my manga over here but yeah we have Blue Period volumes 1 and 2. This is a a big talk right now in the manga community. Uh it's about a guy who basically finds his purpose and his purpose is painting. He just loves art. Um and yeah, he joins the art club and he just learns. He's like, I'm going to become good at art. And then he does. Maybe. I don't know. We only have two volumes in English right now. So I hope he becomes good at art. <laughs> uh, next up, we have The Daily Lives of High School Boys. Now, this has been around since 2010 and only recently just got an English release. So that's pretty cool. You know, it's about a bunch of... There is no plot. <laughs> there is no plot to this series. It's just dudes and they hang out and they're in high school, you know, because it's The Daily Lives of High School Boys. And then antics ensue they just do things <laughs> and it's dumb but it's also pretty funny so yeah uh, i have three volumes of this i don't know how many are out in english right now i think this is up to date could be wrong and then finally this is the end who i'm tired <laughs> it's banana fish volumes one and two um yeah this is my friend's angela's favorite series uh and i know a little bit about this there's like crime syndicate i think i don't know uh and it's a shoujo so this is my third exception to me not being super familiar with shoujo um and yeah i feel like i'm really gonna like this series i heard it's sad though which i i don't want to be sad but it's i heard it's good so i want to read it uh and yeah uh so yeah that's my manga collection uh if you have any suggestions of what i might like from the stuff you've seen highly appreciate it um, I'm going to leave my anime list down below because I have read some more manga than what I've seen. And also you get to see what anime I've watched. So, you know, that might be a little cool. And also I kind of want friends that I can talk about anime with. So hit me up on there if you want. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, see ya!